You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hey guys, it's Kathleen McGivern here. Oh man, it's already fall. Well, I'll be honest, I already have my pumpkins out. But that's really because I just like to grow them myself. I just love growing pumpkins of all shapes and sizes. It's a six month adventure as I start my Atlantic Giants indoors in the spring and then after months of TLC, I get a giant pumpkin or two. They're just so beautiful. Also, Halloween is kind of like my Christmas. If you're someone who wants to start getting ready for Christmas in November, well, Honestly, that is how I feel about Halloween. I love it. But also, I love autumn too. So let's get inspired by some lovely autumn artworks and ideas that you can do with your kids in your classroom or at home if you're like a homeschool parent. So I have both ideas to give to you, but also you can check on out um, some things that I have on my YouTube channel and beyond, but I'll get to that later in the episode. First, let's acknowledge you. You are amazing. So before I share some ideas, I just want to say, dude, good job. It is a pandemic right now and there is a lot going on. There are wildfires raging, um, weather is just totally unusual. We have teachers that are beyond stressed out. I know that for me right now, I'm in class teaching during all of this and I have to, I'm just stressed out a lot, right? Cause I'm doing this full time, I'm teaching full time. Um, some people are distance learning and some people are doing hybrid, but we're all at different places and this is new for everybody. So not only are we doing our typical jobs, now we are reinventing our jobs and it's a lot, right? So you're most likely teaching in an entirely new way and you've made it to October. So honestly, you need to take a moment right now to acknowledge that you're making amazing moments happen and look at all the things you have done. So here's your action item. Write down two highlights from the start of your school year or your journey until now. And then one thing that you're oh so grateful for. Take a moment, recognize it. You can even hit pause on this episode while you get that feeling of warmth in you because you deserve it. Okay, my lovely friend, let's talk about some autumn art lesson ideas. And honestly, we can have so much fun with this. We could do observation because observation is everywhere in autumn and generally so are warm colors. So this is a great time of year to do observational drawings and explore creating art using warm color schemes. As well, we have so much in terms of theme that we can use as inspiration for art. So let's kind of go on in deep onto these ideas. My first idea is nature walk. So we're gonna do a stream of consciousness brainstorm. So take your students or your kids and go on a nature walk. And as you walk as a class, have them write on blank paper or on a page of their sketchbook, a stream of consciousness, note taking or observation list. Of course, this is very fluid and you want to encourage them that this is not like normal note taking where it's very linear or vertical on the paper. You let their minds kind of drift and their hands drift over the paper and let them fluidly draw, sketch, write, whatever makes sense, okay? So any thought that comes into their head, have them write it down. Walk slowly and silently, either around your schoolyard, so you can either go around the perimeter or walk in between or zigzag around it. Or if you're allowed, you can go around the block or to a nearby park. Walk silently, slowly, look and listen. 
I did this once as a student in my first year at Emily Carr University. And we used this activity to be mindful and acknowledge all the ideas and thoughts in our minds as we traversed the surrounding area. As you walk as a class, have your students look and listen, have them write or draw these observations as sketch notes on their paper, have them doodle and draw any images they visualize in their mind. They can even use line to express like feelings or emotions that they have. Whatever it is, whatever they feel or have an impulse to draw or write, that is what they should start having map out on their paper. Okay, so this activity is all about the thinking part of art making. If at any time other thoughts pop into your students' minds, encourage them to interrupt their other recordings so that they may record these new thoughts. Because of course, you never know what you're going to need for inspiration or ideas in artworks later. What one random thought might be, um, just you know, apparently random, it might be something magical for an artwork later. So encourage them to incorporate and record all these new thoughts. Use this information for creating artworks later. So you can use it um, to compile a class list of ideas that you can that can inform your instruction or lesson planning over the next couple months, or they can use their own records as inspiration for designing their own artworks. You can also have kids create an artwork or a sketchbook drawing using their ideas or thoughts from the walk as their prompt for their drawing. This is a great way to teach kids to listen to their thoughts and to draw inspiration from both what they see and or hear and what they imagine or think. Next is observational drawings in autumn. So observational drawings are a lovely thing to do in autumn. And this honestly is a great way to get your kids outside, moving and observing the changes in the season. They can compare and contrast what their environment looked like before and after the changes for autumn. This is especially great to do if you live in a place where you have distinct seasons. As well, in autumn, things, well, they fall, right? So this is a great for kids because they can go outside, they can pick up something and then bring it back in for drawing. This is better than say in the spring because picking living things isn't that great. Plants need to make flowers to reproduce, and it also provides food for animals like hummingbirds and bees. So fall is a great time to pick things because nature is naturally discarding it. Have students find something to draw, bring it back in, and then you can have them do a still life observational sketch of the found object. And of course you could do this in many ways, right? You can explore value and shading by having them do a pencil sketch. They can change their perspective so they can draw from looking at the object low. Or they can draw an above the object sketch so they can look above this leaf or they can bend their eyes nice and close to the desk and look at it from the side. Um, they can do close ups so they can draw it really, really close or just magnify just part of a leaf or a stick or whatever they found, right? They can do sketches in different color schemes, right? They can do all um, natural color schemes. They could do warm color schemes. They could do cool color schemes. They can do whatever it is that is something that you can experiment with or you can do the same object in many, many different ways, playing with both different color schemes, but also different mediums. You can do wax crayon, pencil crayon, pencil, charcoal, whatever. You, this is an opportunity to have fun and experiment. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a pause from this episode to let you know about my art resources for educators. You see, I create art resources for art teachers general teachers or homeschooling parents to use in the elementary and middle school levels. 
I really enjoy creating artworks that will target various areas of the curriculum, encourage students to experiment with a range of mediums, and I like to work with themes and topics that are of high student interest. I'm always keeping my eye open for what is all the rage in the student world. I want to save teachers time and therefore I design high quality art lessons that will provide teachers with all the elements they need to teach and implement a lesson successfully. From the lesson plan to rubrics, reflections, and all the steps broken down into visual slides, I've got you covered. My art resources can be found in my Teachers Pay Teachers Store, Ms. Artastic, or by subscribing to my art resource library for art teachers, the Artastic Collective. Find links to my TPT store and my membership in my blog, MsArtastic.com. Now, back to this episode. You can also have them find leaves and do leaf rubbings with their findings. This is especially good for primary. They can also experiment with a few mediums to see what is the best medium or color for doing leaf rubbings with. Once you're done with the found item, don't forget to return it back to nature so it can decompose and give nutrients back to the soil so that the plants can grow next year. Okay, so now let's talk about warm colors in autumn. And we can use this as inspiration for art making, of course. So you can also have students create art that uses warm colors. So as a class, you can make a list and talk about the warm colors and reflect on how they make you feel when you look at them. You can teach this color scheme on a color wheel, then create artworks that use only warm colors. You can create leaf drawings or watercolor paintings using only warm colors. You can do your leaf rubbings with only warm colors. You can paint a warm color background. So you can take like watercolor paint, paints and then paint all over some thicker paper like cardstock with some reds and oranges and yellows. And then sprinkle some salt on it to let it dry cool, right? Add some texture. And then afterwards you can either paint or draw on with some black um, paint or a marker or whatever it is that you want to use. Um, you can paint silhouettes or draw silhouettes of different fall icons. So anything that, any imagery that is fall. So you could do sticks, leaves, you could do acorns, pumpkins, whatever it is. Um, you could also make collages with clippings or paper clippings that are only warm colors. So you Kids can go through magazines and newspapers and cut out only things that are orange, yellow, and red, and then make a collage with that. You can also create a variety of autumn themed artwork. So you can have students create art that reflects an autumn theme. As a class, you can easily brainstorm different ideas of things that you see in autumn, such as acorns, falling leaves, warm colors, pumpkins, gourds, scarecrows, crows in general, harvested food, farm fields, wheat, um, autumn landscapes. The list is exhaustive. And I'm sure your students can think of many possibilities. They can even combine ideas from the class brainstorm to create an artwork. You can use these ideas to create artworks design lessons over the season, or use them for sketchbook prompts. And this is something that you can easily do in person or as a Zoom activity or whatever um, digital class recording device that you're using. So you can write stuff down as students offer suggestions and then take a picture of your class brainstorm and then share it out to your students digitally. So just because you might not be in person teaching right now doesn't mean that you can't do seasonal art and explore the world outside. Finally, if you need some ideas or if you just need to take a break in your classroom or from recording lessons for online instruction because, hey, I know that's a lot of hard work. <laughs> I do it every week and I can hardly keep up with just doing like my normal teaching plus misertastic everything and 
also making my YouTube episodes, and then now I'm adding this podcast. So I get it. <laughs> so if you need a break, um, just so you know, I've begun creating autumn artworks on my YouTube channel. So you can find the lovely drawings in my YouTube channel. Mids are tastic, and they're just some fun, cute, autumn themed or fall themed artworks that you can use as assignments for your classroom. Of course, they're taught by me. Um, I'm a teacher, so that's perfect for you. And I'm a trained artist and art teacher. And as well, um, you can use them just as home with your kids or um, send home for assignments or homeschooling assignments, whatever it is that you need. Um, they're there for you. They're obviously free because it's on my YouTube channel. So just search um, Mizzartastic on YouTube. Okay, so finally, just so you know, if you need a break from everything and you're like, man, I can't plan another lesson. Like, it has been a hard, hard back to school because honestly, it has been. So if you need a break from planning or if you just want some refreshing new ideas, I have created some new autumn art lessons in my TPT store or if you're already a member of the Artastic Collective, then you can find these lessons already as part of your membership. So the first thing is, is that I've created a digital and print, um, Google Digital, and also it comes with a PDF file, but it'll be automatically uploaded to Google Classroom. It's the Autumn Art Tutorials. So you'll get eight lessons that are uh, digital lessons. So if you're doing distance learning right now or hybrid, you can Go on my TPT store and find my digital and print autumn art tutorials resource and you can click that and in, then that will be automatically added to your Google Drive. So you can use that in your Google Classroom. And I've also created some awesome artist inspired autumn artworks. So I've created a Vincent van Gogh um, pumpkin art project. So it's in theme of the starry night, but it obviously has a pumpkin on it. Uh, I've also add, added a Kusama pumpkin art project. So it's a fall theme that also includes a pumpkin inspired by her lovely, lovely, lovely polka dotted pumpkins. Oh my goodness. But of course uh, I've included some other autumn elements in that. So that is new in my TPT store. Or again, if you are somebody who is an Artastic Collective member, then this is already in your membership. I've already added it for you. Um, finally, I also added a Jean-Michel Basquiat um, artwork. It's a pumpkin too. Yes, pumpkins. Okay, I clearly have pumpkin problems. But anyways, it's a pumpkin in a Basquiat one. And because he kind of has that lovely style that's a little bit more Anyway, when I created it, I felt like it was a really great style for Halloween. It's kind of what I'm getting at because it it's very bold and dark lines with lots of scratching texture. And so for me, when I created it, I kind of gave it a little bit of a Halloween vibe to it. But of course, you can delete the word Halloween that I've inscribed into it if you're not teaching Halloween tutorials in your classroom and you can just have the autumn part. So those are new. I'm excited about them. And of course, I also have my Thanksgiving digital art project. So if you're like me and you're like in Canada and here we celebrate October, at the, sorry, oh my goodness. We celebrate Thanksgiving at the beginning of October. I know that in the United States, it's much later in the year, but for us, it's earlier. So I already have the Thanksgiving stuff posted. Um, and then I also have posted Halloween digital and print. So if you are scrambling for some ideas because you are no longer in class teaching, I've got you covered. Again, our Tastic Collective members, it's already there for you. Just head on over to your membership, log in, find it in the holidays and seasonal library. Otherwise, if you're interested in finding them, head on over to my TPT store. I'll post the link that is directly to the autumn section of my TPT store in this episode show notes. You can find all my show notes in my blog. I will post them as episode blog posts there and I'll have all my links so you can check them out 
that'll be cool. And otherwise, my lovely friends, that is the end of this episode. So make sure you join me next week. I'm going to, well, actually, it's not next week. I'm going to be doing a bi-weekly podcast for the start because I'm teaching full-time. It's a pandemic. I have a full to- uh, weekly YouTube channel, The Artastic Collective, a blog, and a Teachers Pay Teachers store. So um, I kind of have no free time, and I'm really trying to be an artist on top of this and make my own art. Yeah, it's going to be bi-weekly, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. And if you're somebody who's interested in coming on a later podcast episode and sharing some tips and ideas that you're doing in your classroom or if you want to say you, you have a new blog post that come out or a new resource or you've created an art tutorial and you really just want to share some tips, ideas, or resources with the Ms. Artastic, Artastic Nation, then email me. Uh, my contact information is on my blog and I totally am chill with most things. So hit me up. We can chat, figure some things out. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next episode.